Good afternoon. Here we are, the weekly Saturday Q&A publishing at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. I think we're in week four in a row, so I feel good about this. And we're going to dive right in. If I don't get to your questions this week, I put the uh, I put the announcement out on Twitter and Facebook. So that's where we're going to focus this week. Thanks for sending them in. There's a lot of them. I'll get to as many as possible. I don't want to skim over and not give... Uh, answers that I feel like give some good depth, but I will try to be as expeditious as possible. By the way, just getting out of the pool and uh, I'll get you an update on the knee in tomorrow's vlog. Let's dive in. Oh yeah, and I'm going to go live here in the studio on Monday. I don't know what time yet, but you, that'll be another opportunity to ask questions. Monday, mark it down. Here we go. Let's rock and roll. Caleb asks on Twitter, have you ever been approached for a pro contract by a major shoe brand? That's from Caleb. Caleb, I have not. I think if I wanted to pursue that, I could, on just frankly, on my own. Um, not because of necessarily even my running, but frankly, because of the growth of this YouTube channel that does get the attention of a lot of brands. But frankly, I like keeping it as it is because I can review so many different running shoes for all of you. Like, I think that's one leg up that I have on some other pro athletes who also have uh, YouTube channel. So anyway, Caleb, no, I have not been approached and I'm okay with that. Okay, moving on here. Uh, this one is from San. He asked, uh, where is it? I just saw it a second ago. Um, well, he basically was asking between the Asics Glide Ride and the Skechers Max Road 4, which one would I choose? Glide Ride. Durability, much, much better. Uh, a little more, st it's not a stability shoe. It's a neutral road shoe, uh, but a little more stability built in to the point where my right foot, I had surgery on my right foot in college for PF. I know, that's a whole nother story if you haven't heard that. And so I pronate in a little bit uh, on my right foot and this glide ride helps with that pronation, okay? I love the glide ride, nice and soft landing, um, but the durability is definitely an issue there. So I'm leaning toward this. Now this is a little heavy, but I'm okay with heavy during training. If I can get back to running sooner rather than later, this will be my go-to leading into Houston, I do, and it has a little bit of pop to it. It's a nice, I don't know, the midsole, I really, really like it, so the, the glide ride, it would be. Here we go, moving on. Um, James asks, hey Seth, how many miles did you put on your 4% slash next percent, and did you start to feel less benefit the more miles they had in them? That is from James. James, I noticed a drop in the 4% after about it was like right about 110, 110 to 120, where I felt like the pop in the 4% was, uh, was, was leaving. Now, I will say, um, I, I put 75, almost 80 miles into the next percent before it went under the knife, and it still had some life into it, okay? I'm just being very open with you. It could have gone another... I would say at least another 30 to 40, maybe even more. I don't know. But um, so anyway, that's my answer for the next percent and the 4%, which, um, you know, it's like some people have taken the 4% all the way to four to 500 miles before they literally are just falling apart. So I have not done that yet. All right, that's from James. Moving on here. We'll jump into Facebook here in a second. This is a big one. So this is from Woodrunner, and he asks, when mountain focused, okay, how much ascent or descent would you say is runnable on routes you choose? Um, and how many times per month would you head to a big mountain? How does it fit into normal runs? How long, how long pre-race would you not run mountains to save your legs? So Woodrunner, that's a big question. It always depends on the type of race you're getting ready for. So for the Pikes Peak Ascent, that's 13 miles up, 7,500 uh, feet of vertical gain approximately in that race. I was going to the mountains twice a week to run a 14 or twice a week. Now, I was fortunate that I could work that into the schedule. I'm not saying you need to do that. My goal before Pikes Peak was to get five to 10, preferably even five to 12,000 feet of vertical gain every week. And uh, that's what I did. And I ended up getting second in the race, set a 12 minute PR this past year compared to two years ago when I, when I ran the same race. So I feel good about that. And as far as how close to the race before cutting it, I think I would not go 10 days. So for me, for Pikes Peak, I think my last 14 or, you know what? I think it was like eight or nine days before Pikes Peak, before I called it and I just did baby uphill. Does that make sense? I hope that helps. But it all depends on the race you're getting ready for. I think that... I think that if you, if you seven to 10,000 feet, like depending on where you live is just a beautiful amount of, I know it's a lot, but it's like, if you really want to get 
get fit and um, and get those legs strong, I think it's a it's a really good number to shoot for. Moving on here, uh, la 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 la. Let's see, there's a lot of them. Um, what is the? F this is from Gustav. What is the best fast pace trainer? So I'll just pull a couple out real quick. We got the Turbo from 2018, the Turbo One. I love the Rincon. It treated me well. It's got some pop and it's very lightweight. And I didn't get to put as many miles into it as, as I would have liked, but the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. These three, I would say, are faster, more up-tempo. Um, could you pull off a long run in this shoe? You could, especially the Rincon, I think. But uh, I would lean more toward a tempo day or a middle distance day for these three shoes. That is from Gustav. Thank you, Gustav. Uh, as I'm reading the next one, I'll set these down. Will you continue to train for the marathon after Houston and Atlanta? What will your goals be for following those races? That's from Runner Sam. Love the channel. Best of luck with the knee in Houston. Thank you, Runner Sam. Um, yes, I will continue to train for the marathon. So depending on what happens with the knee, will impact what I do the, the rest of the, let's say, first six months of 2020. And the goal is to run at least one half marathon in May. Um, sorry, in the first six months of, of 2020. So I'm leaning toward the Brooklyn half marathon. And then New York City in the fall. That is the goal. All right, that's kind of the, the general work uh, layout. And it all depends on the knee, runner. Sam, moving on here. Um, Nicholas asks, how many ounces of water do I drink daily? I don't drink enough, Nicholas, frankly, uh, especially straight water. I drink a lot of tea, as you know. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, everybody. But I should probably, if I had to pick and then how is, is this coffee count, um, I would say, I'd say it's around two liters is my guess, including, probably inc that would include a good chunk of tea. So anyway, Nicholas, good question. Bottom line, that is one of my goals is to just cut back on coffee a little bit in the new year and up the up the water intake. So I love it. That's a good one. Okay, here we go. Um, Nick asks, sorry about your knee, Seth. Do you feel that you have overtrained for the Houston Marathon? Hope you recover well. Um, overtrained, that's a big question, Nick. Maybe I'll answer that tomorrow. Um, gosh, Nick, I think, I think what, I don't think so actually, as far as volume of running, I think what happened uh, just real quick is that the Amsterdam, New York, um, and then transitioning away from the mountains so quickly, I think, and doing the same, like in mountain and trail running, my legs were used to that for so long, changing positions and going up and down, and it's really good for your knees and everything to change what you're doing. Um, and that's why, yeah, so I think, uh, I think then the body got a kind of a shock to the system and I couldn't really go train in the mountains over the last month because we did get a lot of snow. So I was kind of stuck down here on pavement and concrete. Like I couldn't even run on, on trails here in Denver that are local in the city because it was all ice and snow for a while. It's kind of melted now, but um, anyway, that's a big, but I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's too much volume anyway. Good question, Nick, we'll come back to that. Okay, um, let's see. Du -du -du -du. Harry asked, how long should I recover following a 50 miler? Also, how quickly should I pick up the volume again? Thanks, Seth, as always, that's from Harry. A 50 miler. So, I mean, you think about for a marathon, a lot of the, you know, I'd say for a marathon, at least two weeks. And so if you do the math, okay, well, maybe logically it would be a month. And I'd say it's not a bad rule. Of now, listen, I haven't done a 50 miler in a long time. I would lean toward, I would lean, okay. I'd lean toward like that three week to four week window and if you still, if you, if after three to four weeks, you still feel just a little beat up, I'd, I, okay, but I would also start cross training. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. I would also start cross training probably two to three weeks after a, a 50 miler, um, just to get the legs moving in a pool on a stationary bike, just to make sure you're not uh, getting too stiff and not losing too much of that flexibility. Uh, but I would say you should be able to start running again after a month, but I think it's not a bad idea to just chill out. Um, and he also asked, also how quickly should I pick up the volume again? So I'm a big, I'm a big fan of kind of hitting the reset button and starting not from zero, but let's say if your goal is to get up to 70 miles a week or 80 miles a week or whatever the case is, I'm a big fan of starting at like 25 to 30, frankly. Uh, and then just adding, I like to add five to 10 miles a week. And that, you know, some t I think that's okay for me, but that's after 
so many years of running. So again, it comes down to how much experience you have. Harry, good question. Okay, okay, Facebook, here we go. Facebook, can't forget about Facebook, here we go. Um, let's see, Sterling asks, how long did it take before you could feel the muscles in your ankle building from the stability disc? So in this vlog, upper right-hand corner, try to remember to link to it. I go over my ankle exercises and Sterling, I just gonna be real frank, I feel like it was a good, like, I'm gonna say four to six months of consistent ankle rotations, ankle strengthening, and okay, but also Sterling, I was, I was doing a lot of trail running as well, and trail running strengthens your ankles. It just naturally does, so keep that in mind. Good question, but I would say four to six months. Here we go, um, boy. Uh, from Jesus Navarro, do you believe in doing all four phases of a training cycle? Jesus, I'm not sure what um, four phases you're referencing because there's a lot of different training philosophies out there. Sorry, I just need a little more intel on that question. I mean, I, I don't know if you're talking to, yeah, I'm not even going to go there because there's so many different training philosophies out there. Moving on, Rocky asks, how are you dealing mentally with your runner's knee? Is it taking a lot out of you? Rocky, um, it's not. I would say it's not. It's, uh, it's, it's a bummer. I hear it, Rocky, I mentioned this a couple days ago. I'm really, really grateful that it's not a bone injury. I've had, I think I've had 10 stress fractures in my life, approximately right around 10. So the fact that it's not a bone injury gets me excited because I was running high volume on pavement and concrete and I stayed stress fracture free. So I'm kind of using that as my mental, like, okay, this is a new injury. I've never had runner's knee. Let's figure it out, problem solve, and learn for the future. For example, everything I learned in yesterday's vlog from the physical therapist, amazing. And that was just my first session. And so now I can apply that to the future to stay healthy and hopefully pass on that information to all of you at some point. So it's, uh, yeah, Rocky, it's, um, it's not ideal. I'm not going to sugarcoat it either, Rocky. So here we go. Moving on. Um, Jan asks, what racing shoe am I most excited to try in 2020? Jan, John, John or Jan, I am most excited about the Endorphin Pro from Saucony. I'm really excited. I haven't held it yet in my hands, but it's the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Stay tuned. It will be arriving on the channel, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, Joel asks, do you think that the world record sub two hour marathon will be broken this year? If so, where? Joel, I think the I think the marathon world record, um, I don't think it'll be broken this year actually, and I don't think um, I hate to, I'm, I'm just gonna say it. I don't know if Kipchoge or Bekele will ever run as fast as they've already run, only because perfect can like it's all a lot of it comes down to weather, and when they set those world records, the weather was like pretty spot on, um, and in Berlin, and so. It's like so many different factors go into it, not to mention they're not getting any younger, uh, but that, you know, mm, who knows? But that's just my thought. I hope they battle together and they race at some point in 2020. Uh, so anyway, I hate to be the pessimist, but I just know like it's so difficult to have everything go perfectly. Just being a realist here. Here we go. Uh, let's see. How often do you get shin splints? John, um, Jan, I, I only get, I've only gotten shin splints once in my life three years ago. So I don't, I've only had them once in my life. Uh, Kristen asks, in your opinion, what is the best stability running shoe for pronation? Oh, Kristen, I'm sorry. I am, so I don't run in a lot of stability, but I will say the New Balance Vongo, I'm not saying it's the best, but I put it on uh, last year and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's not too crazy overbuilt. You know what I mean? I tried the Ravenna 11 from Brooks. Yeah, the Brooks Ravenna, or was it the 10? Brooks Ravenna 10, and that was also good, but it was a little too rigid for me in 2018. So check out the New Balance Vongo, uh, the Ravenna 10 or 11, and um, yeah, hopefully that gets you moving. But I, I haven't, I don't run in very many uh, stability shoes. Hope that helps, Kristen. Sorry if, uh, but you know what? Maybe anyway, maybe in 2020 I'll try and dig out a few more because I know a lot of people do need stability shoes. Let me go here one second. Okay, just searching here, searching here. Sorry, real quick, real quick. Uh, from Scotty, he asks, when you talk about 70 plus miles a week in prep for a, a PR or a Boston quali qualifier marathon, uh, increasing your fitness, what are you referring to specifically when you say fitness? That's from, that's from uh, Scotty. Scotty, that's a good question. So when, I when I'm talking about fitness, I'm talking mostly about the aerobic capacity that you have built up uh, through 
consistent, not even fast running, just consistent running. Um, so like your endurance, your stamina, when you start, like if you take six months off and you get off the couch, it's hard to go run three miles. That means your fitness is low. Your aerobic capacity, your endurance, your stamina, whatever you want to call it, is just, it's dropped significantly. But then a month later, six weeks later, your fitness is beginning to come around because you're training consistently again. So that's what I mean by fitness in a very uh, a kind of broad terminology. Good question, Scotty. Uh, we could go deeper into that, but that's my, that's, when I'm talking about fitness, that is what I am referencing because then you can also start talking about racing fitness where not only do you have a good aerobic base but you're building that aerobic base on the on the bottom of the pyramid that i'm always talking about and then the bigger the fitness base on the bottom the higher the peak at the top because you should be able to do your workouts faster and faster which means you should be able to race faster and faster on race day. So that's what, um, when I'm always talking about that pyramid, building that aerobic base, that aerobic fitness base at the bottom big, it's for the pyramid on top because the, the bigger the, the foundation, the bigger the pyramid you could build. All right, good question from Scotty. All right, Clay asks, what is your normal sleep schedule? How often do you try to get, how much do you try to get a day? Clay, um, Clay, Clay, Clay. I have dreams, Clay, of going back to I used to go to bed at 9.30, Clay, and then I would wake up. I mean, I'd wake up early. Uh, I'm a morning person, historically, so I would wake up at 5, 4.30, and I'd feel totally refresh, refreshed and go. Because of the vlog three and a half years ago, edit, excuse me, editing at night, I can no longer do that. So I edit at night when everyone's asleep, and usually I'm not asleep until, sadly, about... 11:30 or midnight or one, depending on how hard the edit is that day. And but in an ideal world, Clay, um, no less than six. And in an ideal world, when I'm running high volume, I do need that. I just yearn for that seven and a half to eight hour range. Okay. Um, but I, yeah. Oh my goodness. And I love even more. But it's like life, life, life. Clay, good question. Uh, that's a little background on everything there. Um, okay. Jennifer asks how to get a little closer to a reasonable racing weight after injury without dieting or hurting performance? Jennifer, I think it's a good question. Um, we all know when we're like fit and we're feeling ready to rock and roll on the race line and an injury can set us back where we're not, you know, out there burning as much, uh, burning as much as far as the calories go. So um, I would say, so I, I would say don't rush it. You know, even if you do the race, maybe approach the race as a, it's going to be a fun race and I'm going to go enjoy it. And now, if it's a huge peak race that you've been prepping for and you're trying to set a PR, I get it. Um, I mean, I guess one little maybe workaround could be in addition to your run, three times a week, you hop on a stationary bike for 30 minutes, you know, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't try to rush maybe reapproaching an ideal um, racing weight or where you just feel fit you feel like okay i'm ready to rock and roll here so that's a little idea or hitting the pool as well so uh but i agree like you don't want to diet you don't want to cut your calories like that's not good because your body is like yearning for these for the nutrition or else your body's going to start to break down you're going to have injuries uh, i have an injury right now so anyway it's no good it's you don't want to do that okay moving on here uh, Sean asks, what do you think of the Maffetone training method? Sean, I'm not even going to get into it. Go check it out, upper right-hand corner, that vlog up there, and I go all into the Maffetone training question. Okay, moving on here. Uh, Hoan, Hoan Trin asks, uh, how was your fitness level after your stress fracture injury in the summer, and which cross-training exercise helped you stay in shape the most? So I think actually Hoan Trin, that my fitness comes back really quickly. It, if I like, I was out for eight weeks with a stress reaction, and uh, I think the best is swimming. Okay, um, it is sw more so than the stationary bike, and um, yeah, swimming is really good. Now it, the trick though is to kick your legs and not rely on your arms too much uh, to keep those legs moving. So, and it comes back quick. So, Hoan, that's yeah. Oh gosh, 
Oh, cross training. Okay, ju jumping back into Twitter. Uh, we're, let me know. I don't know how many more I can take here as far as like time. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. This is from Beardson. Hi, Seth. How much time does it take for you to record footage on your runs? I'm really looking into filming and editing, but I just can't make a normal run while always setting up the camera at a good angle. So I'm doing my training and then run a bit more to get the footage. So Beardson, um, one little trick I have is that um, when I'm training, I'm training. When I'm training and filming, um, I'm not putting as much emphasis on, okay, this is an important critical workout or a critical long run. So I, I can stop for you know 30 seconds, set up the camera, run backward, and then go and pick up the camera again. So it depends on where I'm at in the training. Like I'm not afraid to stop for 30 seconds and set up the camera and then go get the shot. And then, uh, but if I'm in the middle of critical, like a threshold run, I would never, you know, carry a camera on a threshold run or an important, uh, important long run. So, um, and you probably have noticed, like I don't film all my runs. Um, I think it's nice to also just take a break and leave technology uh, behind sometimes. So even though I have to leave you guys behind, I don't like doing that. But anyway, Beardson, it's a good question. And I do need to still make that vlog about how I go about filming and editing the vlog. It's a, that's a big, that's a, maybe with my knee injury, if we'll see what happens, maybe I'll have a little more time. Hopefully not, right? Okay, uh, Tubby asks, have you ever done a park run? I know 5K ain't your thing, but they're awesome. So I guess there's park runs. For those that don't know, there's park runs in the United States. I didn't realize that. It's something that started in the UK where every Saturday, um, it doesn't cost any money, I don't think. And you just show up at a park and they, ta they have a 5K course marked off and there's a timer there and people go run a 5K and they go, you know, it looks fun because it's not really, it's not as competitive, but it's kind of, you can chase down your own goals and maybe your own PRs at these park runs. So I have not done one. When I come to the UK, you better believe I'll be doing a park run. All right, moving on here. Let's say we'll take three more. Here we go. Three more. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Um, so Devin asked, this is a good point, Devin. He asked on Twitter, do you, did you do an official review on the glide ride or max road? I couldn't find it. So Devin, I apologize. I did not. The reason I did not is I, I kind of, I lumped it into my uh, running shoes of the year because believe it or not, they made it into my top three for road running shoes. And uh, Devin, it was right around when my knee was starting to hurt. Um, and I just didn't want to put any more pressure on them as far as like going out again and, and filming uh, running in those shoes. So Devin, I apologize, but go check out the Road, I did do first impression videos though. So they are somewhere on the intro webs. I'll try to remember to link to them upper right hand corner. Okay, here we go, two more. Hey Seth, I'm running a trail marathon next year. What shoes would you buy? Solomon S-Lab Ultra 2 or Hoka Speed Goat EVO? Um, Evo, EVO. So where is the Speed Goat? Uh, da, 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 there it is. I don't think I have the, I, it's inside. Sorry about that. I would, um, hmm, that's, a, that's tough. If it was 50K, I would probably say definitely the Speed Goat. I love the, I love the Ultra, but bottom line, the Speed Goat has a lot more cushion and the Ultra from Solomon, it's, it's a much more, the stack height is much, it's, it's not nearly as tall as the Speed Goat, the Evo Speed Goat. Um, I think it comes down to, do you prefer a little more cushion or not? And for a trail marathon, especially if it's your first one, you might want to lean toward the Speed Goat. However, I would say, Okay, if it was me personally, I would go for the lighter option because um, I'm trying to race and go fast. And I would even, for me personally, I would actually go with the um, Solomon S-Lab Sense, well, in 2020, the Solomon S-Lab Sense 8 SG because there's just enough stack height to resist. But again, my legs are kind of used to the trails. And so for you, if it's your first one, I would probably lean toward the speed go. Good question. All right, moving on here. Um, then, then there's the Solomon S Lab, uh, or sorry, the uh, speed, the speed go, the speed cross, all these names, the speed cross five um, could also be an option, but it's a little, a little heavy. So there you go. Okay, one more. Let's jump back to Facebook one more time. Oh, I like this one a lot. This is from James. I'm glad I saw this one. Okay, hold on. If, if you had not created your YouTube channel and daily vlogs, thank goodness you did. Did you, thank you, James. Do you think your running career would have moved in the same direction as it has, i.e. road marathons? In another way, do you think the YouTube family 
on your channel influences your running goals. Thanks and season's greetings from James. James, um, I actually, um, it's a great question. I had an answer early because I read this earlier. Um, basically, I don't think, I actually, so <laughs> I actually, I've transitioned to the marathons and some people have been a little concerned, like Seth, are you gonna still run up in the mountains? And, and I am. So I would say I'm actually not listening to the, I think if it was your choice, I would be running in the mountains more because there's you know more beauty up there um, rather than focusing on road marathons. So I'd say I'm actually maybe going a little bit because the channel historically has been a little bit more about trail running versus road running. Now in 2020, first five months, roads. Okay, mostly, yeah, roads, mostly. <laughs> June, July, August, trail. September, October, November, December, back to roads. Okay, so I'm not counting trails out completely, but um, did that answer your question, James? I, excuse me, I hope it did. Do you think the YouTube family? Um, I hope it did. I think I think I covered it. Oh yeah, do you think it would have taken a different uh, path? Gosh, yeah, that's a good. I'll have to think more on that, James. Thank you for asking. I like those personal questions as well. And I'm back. So here's the deal. This camera that I use only films in 30. 30 minute segments and then it automatically stops recording and I cannot see the back of the screen. So I actually don't know when it stopped recording. I really apologize and I, I unfortunately don't have time to go back and watch it all to figure it out. So I was probably answering one of those last questions. Sorry, uh, I, when I'm editing inside in like five minutes, I will be able to see it, but I just don't have enough time to come back out and re-record. So uh, I'll try it. Maybe I'll comment down in the comments about it. Bottom line, thank you for being here. I was talking about shoes. I was talking about all sorts of goodness. You guys rock. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. That's why someday we will have a, a, a cameraman behind the camera to uh, monitor that, that kind of stuff. All right, we're going to sign off. And I was going to say one other thing. Oh, I was answering James' question about the YouTube channel. That's what I was doing. Uh, so hopefully, James, I answered most of it. Okay, signing off here. Bottom line, we are going to toss it back on the right and the left to the last two Q&As over the past couple of weeks in case you missed those. Um, a lot of good information there about shoes, about training, and about, um, gosh, I think we got into a lot of foam rolling and stretching conversation as well. There you have it. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you in the morning. See you tomorrow.